So here I'm going to go over a cannabis cloning procedure, which came out to be 13 steps, which I know may not be the luckiest number, uh, but I try to break it down so it's easy to follow to allow a successful cloning procedure. So first uh, basic process of this is in step one, and kind of most important, is to select a healthy plant. When a healthy plant that's a female, at least two months old, you can go as young as one month, but that's kind of pushing it, uh, has not been overfed nitrogen fertilizer. So female, at least or about two months old, and has not been overfed nitrogen fertilizer, as that will make the rooting process much easier. Next step is you want to cut, you want a clean, sterilized knife to cut a side shoot that's about three to six inches long and has a stem diameter of about an eighth to a quarter inch. It can be cut flat or at a 45 degree angle. Doesn't mean you have to kind of get out a protractor and measure exactly that 45 degree angle because uh, it doesn't have a great impact on the rooting. A 45 degree angle is beneficial of sticking into a media because it will penetrate a little bit easier, but you can kind of do a flat cut. It doesn't have to be at a perfect 45 degree angle. Step three would be a leaf count. Sometimes you want to remove some lower leaves, maybe necessary to allow enough stem exposure. We see a bunch of um, cannabis clones here uh, to be placed into holding media. Uh, this is an aeroponic cloner here. Uh, the end cutting should have at least two sets of leaves above the media. If making many clones over a large area, a store recently cut clones in water or high humidity with minimum light exposure. The whole point there is you want to reduce the stress on it. So if you're taking a lot of clones, like in this situation, uh, you want to immediately get them in an area that doesn't cause a lot of stress. However, the time from cutting to clone to placing into a cloning environment should be kept as short as possible. Uh, we want to reduce that stress or under enough stress as it, as it is. The reason why we want to remove those lower leaves is you want to keep in mind that's where the roots are going to start or initiate from. Uh, so reducing that lower leaves allows a uh, more efficient area for rooting or sticking, in this case, in these uh, foam holders. Step four would be applying a rooting hormone. So apply chosen rooting hormone according to the directions for the portion of the stem where rooting needs to be encouraged. And again, that's to be that nice lower portion, portion there. Personally, I have used Clonex gel and produced great success. Uh, any other rooting uh, gel that I've used uh, sticks really nice and it produces great results for me. Growing media. So have uh, growing media ready to go for an easy transfer. You might want to add a heating mat to slightly elevate the temperature above ambient, should be around that 70 to 75 degrees, will help encourage root development. If you go much higher than that, uh, some growers like to, like, all, all the way up to like 70 is good, then 90 Fahrenheit must be better. 90 is not good. Uh, root zones rarely, rarely uh, get that hot, and it doesn't allow for efficient root development. So 70 degrees is just fine. I want to be also be using propagation mix uh, to help reduce the chance of having uh, air pockets and to keep good moisture contact with that newly uh, stuck stem. The stick, so if you're sticking into media, first of all you could dibble a hole, like a little puncture hole, it could be done with a sharpened pencil, uh, into rock wool, sand, soilless mixture, or other fine substrate to reduce the chance of breaking the stem when you go to place that in there. If you're using a clone machine, have collars ready and in place, have the machine running and ready to be loaded. Don't take your cuttings and then get the cloning machine ready. Make sure that's ready ahead of time so you can put the collar on them and stick them right in. This is a little bit more advanced to see a root already uh, popping out there, but that gives you just that idea of that quick, easy transfer. Uh, cutting the leaves, some growers will go through and cut all the ends of the leaves, take kind of trim them all down uh, to reduce the area and transpiration rate. I personally don't advise this. Personally, I discourage this only because it increases the wound sites and can increase potential for disease. If the cloning environment has high humidity, uh, the leaf cutting is unneeded, really. Uh, it can also cause uh, some other issues with the plants kind of growing out and kind of healing up those areas. Uh, if you have enough of a humid environment, you shouldn't need to cut the leaves. Humidity, as I mentioned, is very important. When I place the clones in a high humid environment, you're looking at 95 plus. If taking multiple cuttings, be sure to label them in some way, either with color coding, uh, labeling different trays. Keep in mind that some uh, labeling methods, especially if you're using certain labels, they may fade in the sun. So just keep that in mind and keep an eye on them. Make sure you're not using always, always the pink and the light blue. Those may fade over time. Watering them in really heavy can help increase humidity and then placing a humidity dome if you're looking at a tray. Now, consistency is key. You want to keep the clones evenly moist. The goal is consistent. Uh, consistency and to avoid excessively wet and dry pockets. You want a nice fine mist over the area, over that leaf surface, and if you're growing in a little bit larger of an area, you can have a monitor here to make sure you're maintaining a certain uh, percent of the environment. 
Clones perform best in 18 to 24 hours of light. Diffused light uh, provides energy for growth, but reduces the chances of burning this tender foliage. Direct high density light is not advised. Fluorescents are great. Warm and cool white is preferred. Work great for clones. You want about 6 to 10 inches away from the clones. A high power light, such as high pressure sodiums, metal halides, ceramic uh, metal halides can be used. You can have shade cloth between them or just hang them about 5 feet away. Dimmable lights are another great source. Uh, they offer the advantage of changing intensity as the clones develop. After four days, you can reduce humidity levels to about 85%. This can be accomplished by partially removing the domes or reducing automatic misting events. You still want that kind of humid environment, but we're starting to ease them off from that 95% or higher humidity levels. Once roots are seen uh, through the media or have reached about six inches long, they can be transferred to their growing media. This can take anywhere from seven to 21 days, again, depending on the environment that you're uh, growing in. Some clones may be slower to initially root, and those should not be transferred until sufficient roots have been produced. You can see here some might be on the borderline edge. You might want to let this go for a couple more days. Do not simply take a block or a tray of clones and progress them to the next step. Treat them as each individual to help increasing the higher percent total that will survive. Lastly, the initial uh, transfer, there may be some color change, which is normal due to transplant shock. As clones age, the light intensities can be increased and the duration of photo period should be kept consistent. So don't panic if you go to transfer them and all of a sudden they get a little bit lighter in coloration. Uh, they usually will uh, bounce back if everything else is kept uh, well um, established and consistent. A lot of growers have got the problem of over fertilizing and burning their tender roots of their newly cloned plants. To summarize these 13 steps, I'm all kind of quickly labeled right here. You can pause the video and take a look at them in more detail with everything they went over to hopefully have a successful cloning process.